uh, over um, meeting for today. So we'll start off. So today we're going to be discussing a homeschool collaboration. Um, okay. This is a uh, part of our Start Small Dream Big project also, which we are doing with ECDA. Every year we do have the Start Small Dream Big projects. Um, one outcome of this also is our book that we do have every year that the children uh, make. So what is this activity that we're going to do? For, for this year, we are uh, focusing on um, awareness with our uh, Singapore waters and sea animals. So here we're going to do an intertidal walk with our family. So why with the family? So because our project, uh, our goal for this year is to involve our family in um, uh, helping our community. So how do we help our community through our project? So like our focus for this year is about Singapore water and sea animals. So we are doing this intertidal walk so that they can learn about uh, the animals that we have here in Singapore. And how do we help them? So um, another uh, activity that we will be doing also that is uh, tied up with our uh, goal in our SSDB project, we will also be making our own t-shirt the kids will help design. So they will make their own drawings about the activities or what they've learned uh, in our project. And they will create their own design for their t-shirt and will be printing it so that they can have their own design t-shirt. So why do we have to do this as a family? So it creates bonds within the family. It creates uh, socialization also for the children. And this kind of activities imprints like a good memory for the children. They, they don't just learn these things in the school. Our, my family also does it uh, for our community. So they don't just, um, you know how children is like, they do things only in school, but at home you don't see that kind of attitude with them or um, behavior with them because they were just expected to do this in school. So if we do this also and extend this one to the family, they will see that what I've learned in school is not only for school, uh, which I can also do with my family and in extension to my community. So it makes learning more meaningful. So how do we do this intertidal walk? So these are the guidelines from um, uh, N Parks. So we can watch this video. Don't worry if you don't have booties. You could wear an old pair of covered shoes. Bring along a dry, waterproof bag containing your water bottle, rain gear, insect repellent, and sunscreen. Make sure you have your portable electronic devices securely fastened in a waterproof casing before placing them in your bag. Right before heading down to shore, Remember to keep your trousers tucked inside your boots. 
At the site, take a minute to familiarize yourself with your surroundings. Locate the nearest AED, car park, and toilet. Should there be a sudden change in weather or a lightning alert, stay calm and move to the nearest shelter. We remind you to observe proper etiquette when visiting the intertidal zone. Do not touch anything unfamiliar as some animals can give you a nasty bite or sting. Do not poke or squeeze animals as this can stress them out. Tread very carefully to avoid trampling on animals as they can sometimes be camouflaged. Be on the lookout for animals such as cone snails, rays, and jellies that may sting, bite, or pinch. Lastly, keep an eye out on the tide level and ensure that you have sufficient time to leave the intertidal area. Thank you for appreciating nature and keeping our intertidal habitats clean and safe in our city in nature. We wish you a pleasant intertidal journey. <laughs> So, okay, so from that video, by the way, the video is, uh, you can find it in YouTube also in case you wanted to watch it again. Uh, you can just type in N Parks Intertidal Walk and some of the materials that you will see to help you uh, gain knowledge more on how to do this intertidal walk is there. So there are just things, there are just some things that we have to remember. Uh, and I just want to highlight more. So like the proper attire for uh, when you go for the intertidal walk. So for the top, it's up to you if you want to wear a long sleeve so that the sun will not be too harsh on your skin. Or if you want to wear something very light and um, like um, a singlet so that it's, uh, it's not too hot for you. Just remember to wear sunscreen. But the pants, we would strongly advise for you and the kids to wear long pants and um a wet shoes just like uh the ones in the decathlon where you can buy for ten dollars you can buy this wet shoes so um or any clothes shoes so that they're protected uh you can also bring some tools for this activity you can bring a tong or any um, container, a see-through container, so that you can put the, uh, the animals that you see inside the container so that they can observe it better. Or you can also bring um, uh, like a stick so that you can just point to the animals if you don't want to touch it and you want the kids to see or to focus on something that you see from there hands away so whenever you do, uh you're at the shore please avoid poking the animals let's be gentle yes again sorry is there someone who wants to raise a question anyways if you want to raise the questions we have a question and answer portion later or you can post it in our chat group. So, um, yeah, just be gentle with the animals. Poking the animals is strongly um, discouraged. Um, you can touch those an the, the animals, but just be, please be gentle with them. Uh, so if you touch the animals, please avoid touching your face also. As some of the animals may be, um, you might, uh, some kids might be allergic to so, some uh, those animals. And we're not that aware of them being uh, allergic to it. So just to be sure, please don't touch your face when you're touching the animals. There are toilets nearby, car park 6 and car park 7, wherein you can wash your hands uh, afterwards, uh, after these activities. Or you can bring your hand sanitizer also. So do respect the animals and uh, the waters. Or our environment how um, when we're taking photos we advise for you to take a photo of the animals in their natural habitat 
So if you see one animal that may uh, run off or might move away and you wanted to take a better photo, you can arrange the animals in such a way that is easier for you. But please don't take a photo of the animal on your palm or on your hand. You can also do a bit of beach cleanup. Because uh, um, another good thing if you're going to, uh, when you do this acti activity is that you will not only see the good things in our Singapore shore, but you will also see some things that might be disappointing to the kids, but it's a good lesson for them to learn about it. So you might, you will definitely see some trash around. So it's a good way of um, presenting it to the children and asking them because especially for uh, like for my class, my students know that plastic is a no-no. We even learned that uh, plastics, we can reduce our use of plastic so that it will not end up in the, in the ocean, in the water. So for them to see that in real life and see that, oh, there is really a problem of plastic, not only in the videos that teacher thinking shows in class or in the pictures that teacher thinking shows in class, but in real life. So what can I do about it? Teacher Tintin, you know, when I went to, for intertidal walk, I saw that there's a lot of water bottles. Oh, then what did you do? What did your family do? Oh, we picked them up and put them in a the plastic and put them in a proper bin. So it's a more lasting learning for them because they were able to do it on their own. They were able to do it with their family, which are um, um, not only just happened in the classroom, it also happened outside of the classroom. And they will feel this as a um, sense of achievement that I've done something good with my family, which I helped my community. So this beach, uh, you can also do this beach cleanup with your children. Just be careful as um, there are some things that are um, we suggest not for you to touch like sometimes you would see there some pots that they use for um prayers so uh yes you can educate your children telling them that this also ends up as trash in our ocean but in respect for those who did those traditions we tend not uh, we better not touch it we just leave them be Aside from that, if you see something that are, are um, may pose danger to the children, let's say something sharp, then um, better just leave it be, move away from it. Uh, that's why we recommend them to wear clothes shoes so that they are more protected in case there are some things in the water uh, that might harm them. Yeah. So aside from that, um when you go to for the intertidal walk and you plan on doing a picnic also afterwards so just make sure to pack up all your things lesser footprint uh put your trash in the bin make sure that you didn't leave anything behind that might harm uh our environment so where do we do this so just like what I said, there are many uh, areas in Singapore wherein you can do this intertidal walk. But we would suggest for you to do it in Changi Beach Park, uh, specifically in Car Park 6. You can, can also extend on Car Park 7, but we strongly advise on Car Park 6 because this is where you can find the, um, the sandbar uh, during low tide. So if you scan, if you scan this QR code, it will show you the Google Maps for Changi Beach Park or Park 6. Uh, you can screenshot it now. Yeah, I'll give you some time for it. Okay. Okay. So there are three parts in our shores. There's the sandy shore, rocky shore, and seagrass meadows. So for the sandy shores, there are specific animals that you will see there like sand dollars and all those other things. In the rocky shores, you might be able to see some crabs or some oysters. In seagrass meadows, you might see the other fishes hiding there. So you can 
uh, choose whichever uh, part of the shore you can go to. Now, if you look at the, the Google map for the Changi Beach Park, you will see this area over here. You will see a to uh, the car park on this area. And there is a toilet over this area also. There are some um, gazebos on this side too, wherein you can place your things. By the shore also, you can also put your things there. You can, you can, pick some, uh, you can also pick it. And over here on this area here, you can find the rocky shores too. The rock parts wherein you will find some oysters, clam, and uh, mussels. And there is also a bus stop on this area over here if you plan to go there by bus. So if you go back to the QR code just now uh, or the Google Maps of this area, you will also find uh, on how uh, how uh, other ways for you to reach this place. So when when do we go for this intertidal walk? How do we plan on get uh, on going? There is a website wherein you can check for the tidal forecast. So if we want to make sure that the tides are low enough for us to see this animal. So you can screenshot this one also, the QR code. It will lead you to the website wherein you can find this tidal forecast. I'll give you some time to screenshot or to scan the QR code. We will also be sending this uh, via WhatsApp if you, need, uh, if you need it. Okay. So how do we read the tidal forecast in YouTube? So it will look something like this. So uh, Yeah, sorry. Uh, you can mute your video. I can hear someone. Yeah. Okay, anyways. Yeah, so over here you will see the date. Uh, and... So in Singapore, we have four tides. So usually, you can see here, the green is high tide. The red arrow going down is low tide. So you have to look for the low tide. At a certain time, it's better to go on the morning or uh, in the afternoon when, where there is the ample uh, sun. So usually at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, or in the afternoon at 4 o'clock until 5 o'clock would be a better time. So this one, this one is very ideal. 14th of August at 7 a.m. And over here, you will see the depth of the water. So what number are we supposed to look at? Uh, when it comes to the depth of water. So advisable for us is until 0 0.5 so that it's not so high. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 meters is uh, the ideal um, time for us to go for intertidal walk. So again, 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 meters for the depth of water. So this one, if you want to go this uh, on 14th of August, you can go to Changi Beach at 7 a.m. Because the water is good enough for intertidal water. There are also some other dates wherein you can do this. Um, you just have to check in Wisuki, which is a better day for you to go for the intertidal walk. There are other days also that you can choose from there. Okay. So how? What are the animals that we can see from the shore? So these, uh, uh, this is a video from N Parks wherein they did an intertidal walk. Hey 
Hey guys, I'm Inez, and today we're at Changi Beach Car Park 6. Today we're going to be exploring the sandy shores at low tide. People always think in Singapore that our beaches don't have much, but here in Changi, the animals, algae, and plants are thriving. So let's go see what we can find. Let me teach you how we can find animals on our shores. So sometimes we look for imprints at the top of the sand. So I found one right here. Did you guys see this circular thing over here? If we flip it over, we have a sand dollar. And right at the bottom of them, they actually have spines. And these spines help them move around and also burrow out of the sand and hide away from the predators. Crabs are actually from a group called Decapods. So Decapods actually have 10 legs. But this guy over here is missing one of them. What's so special about this particular crab is that they actually have modified legs at the back. paddle like structures which help them swim very fast from predators or to help them catch them very type of swimming crab and in particular it's actually called a flower crab. So how can we tell? We can actually look at the patterns all over the shells. It's very pretty. You can see there's a lot of dots and the coloration of it. That's how we can tell it's a flower crab. So usually when you buy crab you always want to have the roll because that's the best part of the crab. So let's flip it over so you can see if we can find that. So how can we tell if they have roll? So we usually try to see whether they're male or female, but in this case, they have a triangular shape over here. So that means they're male. If they're female, they actually have a semicircle shape, which is where all the row is stored. Free fact number two. Soft shell crabs aren't actually specific species of crabs, but they're actually crabs that have recently molted and the shells haven't hardened, so that's why they're edible. Alright, so what do we have over here? Over here we have a sand collar. So this is actually the egg mass structure of the snail. How this is made is that the mom seal will sit right in the middle of the sand collar and they will use mucus and sand and you rub it together they make this entire structure and then they'll lay thousands of eggs all over it. So if you ever see a sand collar impact on our shores, don't touch it okay because they actually have eggs lying all over the structure. Over here we have the shell of the moon snail. So even though this shell may look very pretty and dainty, these guys are actually predatory animals. What these snails do to predate is that they actually use a foot and uh, wrap around their prey and it'll suffocate them when they die. But if that fails, they'll actually secrete an acid onto the shell and then they will soften the whole shell and they'll be able to drill a really nice deep hole deep into the shell. What we have over here is something we're all very familiar with. So these over here are called hermit crabs. So hermit crabs are actually not true crabs and that's because they aren't able to create their own shells, unlike true crabs. So they actually have a very soft abdomen that requires them to always have a shell on them. Hermit crabs love queuing up just like Singaporeans. So why do they do that? That's because hermit crabs, they grow bigger, they need to change the shells. So sometimes we find hermit crabs all lined up according to size and they'll want to efficiently change the shells so they can find a new hole. Alright, we've officially entered sand bubble crab territory! Alright, so we know that they're here because of all the intricate patterns everywhere. Be careful not to step around because the crab is the same colour and size of all these sand balls. You actually know how long the tide has been out by looking at the sandbar. So the more intricate the pattern, the longer the sandbar has been exposed. So these balls over here aren't actually poop. It's actually made by the sand bubble crab. So what the sand bubble crab does actually is they pick up the sand and they sieve through it in all the food particles. They make a ball of all the sand remaining and they release it into sand balls. Oh look, there's one over there! Wow, even in an environment that's seemingly bare, there's so much life on our shores. Living in a city and nature allows us to get up close and personal with such cool animals, which is my favourite part of my tidal walks. So if you are keen to volunteer with Ed Park, sign up for our biodiversity beach patrols. There's so much more to see in our shores. Come down and discover these tidal treasures for yourselves. See you next time! Okay, so that video is actually done by N Parks at Sangi Beach in Car Park 6. So if you see that there are, uh, mostly she's on the sandy shore part of uh, the beach. So if you move closer to the water, you will see some seagrass over there. That's where you see the seagrass meadows. 
there are more animals that you can see there. You can explore there also. And if you see in their video, wherein there's like a tunnel for the uh, water, that is where you can see the rocky parts of, or the rocky shore wherein there's a lot of oysters and mussels and barnacles for your children to explore. Okay, so for now, I'll show you some of the most common things that you will see uh, at the shore. So very, very common is the sand dollar. There's a lot of sand dollars in, in the sandy shore. And it's quite fun to uh, see and compare them as some of them are small, some of them are so big, some of them have a bit of damage in their... Um, uh, it's not like a, a full circle anymore. Or you can even see some dead sand dollars there for your children to compare. Oh, how does it look like when it's... Uh, when it's dead already, you will see like inside there's some lines over there. The live sun dollars uh, have like tiny uh, tentacles that moves whenever you place them back on the sand. So there's a lot of activities and fun things to observe these animals here. There's also some pink sea cucumber. There's even, oh, sorry about that for a while. There's even a warty sea cucumber. Um, there are some flower crabs. Just now in the video, you, you saw that the crab isn't moving because it's just the shell of the crab. So there's a, quite, actually quite a lot of uh, molts of the crabs there. So you can actually hold it, show it to the children. It doesn't move because the, the crab isn't there anymore because this, uh, they grew out of their shell already. Um, some sea stars. For the sea stars, just be careful in handling them as some of them are quite brittle. Mm -hmm. If you see like a knobbly sea star, that's quite okay to hold because they're quite hefty. They're, they, they, they can handle um, this kind if, of, uh, if the kids hold it, hold on to it quite, uh, um, quite roughly. But for some sea stars like this one, uh, they're quite fragile, so just be careful. If you see like a, a sea star that is quite fragile, maybe you can help the children by picking it up and putting it in a um, transparent um, Tupperware so that they can observe it better. Then after that, just place them back where, where uh, you saw them. If they are tucked under the sand, so make sure when you put them back, you tuck them also a little bit under the sand so that you can help them hide from some predators. As during low tides, they're quite exposed to birds. So just to help them out, cover them a little bit of sand or just place them how you saw them before. There are also some balls sea cucumber. When we went there, we thought that these balls were like trash that uh, collected some of the, the, the moss already. But it turns out it was actually a ball sea cucumber. It's fun to see like different shapes of sea creatures along the shore. If it was fun for me, it would be definitely fun for the kids. Classic. Uh, there, there's a lot of hermit crabs there too. Uh, there's just something that we have to remember. If you see some hermit crabs with very beautiful shells, or if you see some empty shells uh, along the shore, please don't collect them because the hermit crabs need it also, even though it's empty. Uh, because some of the hermit crabs might need it or uh, when they grew out of their shells. So just let the children know that this is very beautiful, but we shouldn't be taking it with us because the hermit crabs may need to find their homes when they grew out of their own shell. Uh, you will also see some sea anemones in the seagrass meadows. So it's if the tide is a little bit higher already, you will see it better. The anemones, you will see the anemones better because they're submerged under the water and you will see the how the anemones are flowing and you will see the color better. 
uh when the tide is very low you might see the anemones like very uh squished up because of uh because um most of the sea anemones uh are better seen under the water submerged under the water uh, another is a garlic bread sea cucumber at first when we saw this one along the shore we thought like it's a rolled up towel it really looks weird, but it's fun to see and to observe. Hey, see Thank you. you. Yeah, welcome. So there are also other um, resources that we can check out. Let's say, for example, you saw a sea creature that you don't know or you didn't see from this um, meeting here. So you can actually check in the Wild Singapore website. You can take a photo of it, take a video of it, and then when you go home, you can, uh, you and your child can explore here and see what kind of animal is it. So if you see something that is not so common or not shown here, just be careful as it might be something that could sting you. So just be careful and check first so that you'll know which animal are safe but most of the things that are in Changi beach are quite safe um what else um so for if you if you think that you still need some more knowledge on how to do this intertidal walk with your children you can check out this channel with miss bio girl or miss mj her channel is just keep thinking she has a lot of um uh, intertidal walk in Changi beach uh, she has a lot of information to share also it's good to watch this one so that you'll be able to pass on the knowledge to your kids when you uh go for intertidal walk so if you have any more questions you can post it in our chat and we will answer it for you. Or if you want, you can turn on your microphone and let us know of your questions so that we can share the answer also to everyone. Anybody who has question? No? All good? You can also send your questions in our WhatsApp group so that we can, um, I can, we can attend to your queries. So um take a lot of photos and videos and please do send it to us so that we can also collate it and send it to uh share it to start small dream big project as part of my kids cottage project to help our community to spread awareness of clean water and saving the sea animals here in singapore um once again, you can send your photos and videos before September 17. No questions? <laughs> if you don't have questions anymore, uh, we will be ending this meeting. For those who want to uh, go back to this video, we will be posting this one in our YouTube channel. And we'll be also posting the link in our Facebook, Facebook page. So if there's no, uh, no more question, we will be ending this meeting. Teacher Jessica, do you want to say something? <laughs> okay. So yeah, we'll be ending the meeting. We'll see you. Thank you, parents. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.